Good morning guys, welcome to the shop. Here's a quick little update and uh, tips video, I guess you could call it. I'm starting to countersink the main laundry on, on the tail cone. And uh, Vans, I believe, calls out for seven clicks past flush. And uh, what that means is that you're gonna take your countersink cutter, your micro stop cage, and uh, countersink a hole in the material. This happens to be the angle for the laundry on. Countersink it to flush so that the, that rivet fits perfectly flush and then go seven clicks on the cutter past um, Flush and then you'll see here that that sits a little bit uh, Deep in the hole that's seven past and that's so that and in the next part of this tip is to make yourself a little um, Sample this is uh, just dimpled the way you would normally dimple it. I uh, set my dies right together and then it uh, squeezes tight and gives me a good dimple. Um, so set it the way you do it and then make a test piece and then that way you can check it. I don't know if you'll be able to see that there. Um, you want it to be, you don't want to overdo it and uh, so you just, it's going to tighten up a little bit as you rivet it so uh, don't overdo it. Seven clicks past I think is why they give you that number because that works pretty good. Um, Oil the pilot on your cutter. It's easy to, to break off the pilot on your cutter, so I just use whatever you have laying around. So air tool oil in this case works fine. Uh, just put a little drop of oil on the pilot every now and then, every five or six, ten holes, whatever. Um, and you're going to know, uh, you'll probably break one of these if you're just getting started on your first kit. Um, I did, so ask me how I know. Um, it's real easy to get a little bit crooked in the hole and that's what's going to cause it then the heat from no lube on there will make it even worse. Um, you probably could use the bow lube stuff too, that pasty uh, plastic looking stuff. That'd work good too I bet. Um, then I like to do it, I, I think if you were watching my videos, uh, I might have said in one of the prior videos I was thinking about clamping this thing up here to the, to the bulkheads and doing it there. But I don't think that'd be a good idea. I like when I do countersinking, I like to do it freehand so that I can feel when the shoe or the foot of the, the cutter here is tight up against the material. And then you can kind of feel whether or not you're holding it straight and square. And that's important here. Uh, it's also important to make sure there's no chips underneath of the shoe because that'll hold it out and then you won't get a, to the right depth when you're doing your countersink. Um, and then on this piece, another reason that you would probably potentially break the pilot off of that cutter is that it's so long, it's gonna have a lot of momentum. So when you're holding it, it's gonna tend to wanna twist around a little bit. So you just have to kind of be careful and feel it and try to keep everything straight. So as you're plunging into the material to make that cut, make sure you're um, feeling the two materials you've got the angle in your left hand for me I'm right-handed and then I'm holding the drill in the right hand and um, so you can kind of feel it square up you can feel it bind and all that um, I also like to use the air drill something small and lightweight so that it makes me it makes it so I can feel that even better yet so I've tried it with the, the battery powered drill don't know that turning it really fast is a huge advantage in this case and so you don't have to turn it that fast if your drill is controllable um, I think that's it, and uh, we're uh, we're getting there. We're uh, gonna start deburring and dimpling skins today. I think. See you later.